Yo, what is going on today, YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Today's video is going to be top 10 gods in the game for ranked conquest, not like arena or anything like that. We don't do that here. I'm not good at arena. I int and slash. Mario yells at me all the time. Hurts my feelings. I really cannot play any of the game mode other than conquest. Nobody wants to play with me because I'm so bad. But yeah, so that's what we're going to be focusing on. We're going to be focusing on the two best gods in every role, giving you guys builds, kind of just why they're so strong in the meta. Let's go. Starting with the assassins, and the first one should be obvious. This character is freaking broken. Thanatos. The 9.5 change to make gods that are just squishy, tankier, really helped out Thanatos because he does so much damage that just that little bit of extra survivability in the early, mid, and late game allows him to be just this 1v5 penta machine. And yeah, he's an early game dominant god, but late game, he's still kind of a penta machine, so that's why he's so strong. Protector, Jotun's, Hydra's, Bloodforge, Serrated, and then depending, either Heartseeker if they have slightly more tanks, or Crusher if you're diving the backliners a little bit more. This is a 50-50. I think both are fine. Also, if you feel like you're dying a lot, or if they're focusing you out, Mantle, Magi is both great in this last spot, but just if you're that alpha full damage player, it's just these five items with one of these two. The number two assassin is, I think, a little sneaky, but I think Nem is absurdly strong in the current meta. Her 1v1 potential, her late game dive. I think the combo of Magi's and Erendite is still widely... It's widely known, but not widely abused, I think. And this should be Magi's Revenge. This is like Scream's Pele build, Pele build with the Magi's Erendite combo where... If you're chasing somebody down, you're going to kill them. If you chase somebody down and they try to CC you, you're going to kill them even faster and you'll have more survivability. Your one-shot potential isn't through the roof, but you still have a lot of damage built in just with your base kit because her base kit has gotten so many buffs and then this build is just really strong also. And that's why Nem is in such a good spot right now. She also has really good 1v1s against nearly every single jungler in the meta. But that is the build. Uh, Atalantis for that flat pen attack speed and chase down potential in the early game. Erendite for the cooldown and the chase potential again. Serrated for the chase potential and the trade potential, and then Hydra's with the extra one-shot potential, Magi's with some survivability. You're not really getting off a ton of auto attacks. Maybe they have like a Kumba or a Bologna or something, and you can't really auto too much. Switch the Hydra's out for a Crusher or Heartseek or something like that, so you can actually get a little bit more damage off. Next up, the Warriors. We're going to start with the, 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 the one that's a little less normal i think and it's nike nike is dominating right now i don't know why she's not like a god that strikes me as oh my goodness she's so op but i think it's because that people don't build a lot of sunders for her or they forget to build sunder i actually had a ranked game last week where i played against a nike solo forgot to build sunder and we got smoked because we couldn't kill her. But even if they do build Sunder, you're still going to be a very strong character. I did a slightly tankier rendition of the build. One of the builds had Glad Shield second, but I think Breastplate is just a better item through and through, like period. And I'd rather just have Contagion slightly extra, more utility, I guess, with the anti-heal and then the damage when you're getting CC'd. I think this build makes more sense, but if you really like Glad Shield, you can go the Glad Shield here instead. And then number two... To nobody's surprise, Sun Wukong. This is the build that I have seen a lot in lower level games other than Glad's in for Contagion. I think Glad's is still in a weak spot. I think the other two shields are fine. And I think if you're playing stuff like Alma, Bologna, something like that, build the shields. If you're not playing one of those auto attack gods, don't build the shields. I think Glad's is not great. I'd rather have Contagion. It gives you that little extra utility with this Brawlers. And your survivability is insane with this build, and your damage is really insane too. So this is Wukong, number two in solo. For support, he just got buffed. Yeah, this character is insane in ranked, and the build makes him unkillable. Yes, your early game isn't great, but 99% of games are going late anyway, so who cares? Sentinel's Embrace, Prophetic, Thebes, Binding, Pridwin. Last item is a flex potential, whatever you want. Divine, Desos, E-Staff, Rod. If you want another tank item, you can, but you're going to be overcapped with these five items as long as you have your cloak finished. So I would prefer a damage item. Geb is just, as long as you're not losing the laning phase, you will be a relevant character. I don't like laning with Geb because I hate losing laning phase and I'm an ego player, but Geb is still fine. And number two, Heron. No surprise, still one of the most dominant ranked characters of all time. War Banner is insane when you get to the late game. Cloak stacks so easily. If you're having a little bit of problems, Contagion makes your cloak stacking even easier. Shoguns for you and your team's play. Stone of Binding and Abyssal as just filler last items. You can go Divine, Deso, E-Staff, Gem, whatever you want. I just toss these here because a lot of times when people play support, they like building full tank. So I'm not going to tell people to build damage if they're not comfortable building damage. But this is something around what I would build. I would probably just go, instead of both of these items, I'd probably just go like Spirit's Robe and like Death Sower Divine. And moving into the mid lane, 
One of them is not surprising at all. It's Kukulkin. Come on down. Do I even have to say? Very easy clear. Game goes late. He gets to lay very easily. My one little problem with him is a lot of times people don't build breastplate when they should. And it should just be Pendulum, Book, Poly, Breastplate, and then Obshard Typhons should be your build. If they don't have that many tanks, you can stay with like a Mirrodin Typhons or a Rod Typhons. But if they have like an extra solo laner, especially because I think Warriors have came back a little bit, I would prefer 40% pen and that extra 20% pen on Obshard. But Mirrodin and Rod give you more one shot on Squishies. And the number two, a little surprising to me because he has flown up the win rate charts. Zeus. This is not a build that I've seen yet. Usually the build is Deso here and then Obshard here. But I think Soul Gem Typhons makes more sense with the build because it gives you a tiny bit of survivability and a little bit more burst with Soul Gem and Typhons combination. The only thing is if you're getting dove or if they have a good dive comp, just go alternate timeline. I usually show the starter that you should go here, but this is where you have to use your brains. I know. I'm sorry. I wish I could play the game for you, but we got to think for a second to be like, do I need survivability or does my team peel me and they don't die very well where I can go pendulum and just carry? I know it's scary out there having to think. Sometimes I forget to think, I forget to breathe, but one of them is always good. And then lastly, the hunters. I only did the builds for one of the gods because the build does not change. First god is Hachiman. Very easy to play, very simple laning phase, a good laning phase, not great. And then very safe and scales well into the late game. So there's two builds right now. The one is the absolute current build that is dominating the game. And then the second build is how I think you're going to have to build when warriors come back. So this is the current build. Leaders, devs, Xe, Dom, Demon Blade, and Venom Deathbringer. You don't need the kins because there's not that solo tank. And you're able to go double lifesteal to go with double crit. So your sustain is through the roof, your damage is through the roof, your 1v1 potential is through the roof. However, if tanks and solo come back, I think you're going to have to shift up the build to kin size. But... If you you're playing against like a mage solo and ranked, even after warriors start to dominate in SPL, you can still always go back to this build. This build isn't bad by any means. It's just this build is not going to be as effective against the solo lane warriors. But ornate, devs, Xe, kins, dominance, and then venom, deathbringer. You're going to have double crit. You're going to have kin size. You're going to have shred from Xe. Don't forget, Dom doesn't affect the kin size, but it does affect the crit from ornate and then venom, deathbringer. That's why I think it's still a good item to build. And your spike is way stronger with this build, but it's still pretty strong with this build. And the second god is Rama, another character that is just very strong through laning phase. Again, exact same build as Hachiman. You can just go check the Hachiman build if you want to know the build, but it's literally the exact same thing. If you're playing against a warrior, build the Kins build. If you're playing against a soul laner, I mean a mage, build the Cowl double crit build. But yeah, that's the video. The top 10 gods to be dominating and ranked in the top 10 gods in Conquest, in my opinion. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.